Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Announcements with the Kathy Gray Avatar. If you're with us on Facebook or YouTube, please subscribe to get notifications when we have new videos. If you're with us on Zoom, say hi in the chat. We'd love to say hello back. And if you're with us in person, hello everybody here. And if this is your first visit, please sign the guest book either in the lobby or online at oakcliffuu.org slash guest. A note about a new weekly feature for the folks here in person. You know that area we call the pass-through between the lobby and the sanctuary? That's where you can meet your board. Today, we have board trustee Yolanda Graham. Do you have questions, concerns, or opinions you want to share with our board? Every Sunday morning, starting at 9.30 and ending when the service begins, a member of our board, either in person or appearing on a tablet via Zoom, will be available to meet with our members, friends, and visitors, ready to discuss everyone's thoughts. Today, our service is an encore presentation of Make Something with Sherry Randall. Why make something? Because the act and practice of making is a spiritual practice, regardless of the marketability or professionalism of the finished product. We hope you can stick around after the service for Talkback, where we gather in a circle and discuss the sermon and related topics. After the service, Adult Religious Exploration with Sarah Rickey is back with Owning Your Religious Past, a program designed to help you use reckon with their various religious upbringings and integrate them into their current spiritual lives. Join on Zoom or in person in the Hope Library at 1115. Today's topic is Claiming the Positives. At 1215 today, our White Accountability Group will be meeting in the Hope Common Room and online. If you are white identifying and want to work on being a true anti-racist ally and accomplice, please join us. At 2 p.m., there is a worship ministry meeting, also in the Hope Common Room and on Zoom. Anyone who's willing to help us plan services or wants to see what goes into planning them is encouraged to attend. Also, we have Jazz Jam this afternoon from 3 to 5 p.m. Come play, sing, or just listen. You're welcome to bring food and drink for yourself or to share. Admission is free, though there is a tip jar for the musicians. Coming up, our Widening the Circle of Concern work group continues to meet on Monday at 7 p.m. Please join us by attending the weekly meeting and or submitting your comments and suggestions via email at wcoc at oakcliffuu.org. Note that the presentation by Renee Brill at the Fall Parish meeting about the planned DEI workshop is now available on our church website. Please view it, or review it, in preparation for the next vote. And it's not too late to sign up for our Thanksgiving potluck. Thursday the 23rd, we'll plan to eat about 1 p.m. So bring a dish to share, and remember we always need volunteers to help set up and clean up. The following Thursday, November 30th, the Social Justice Reading Group will resume meeting with a new book, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian, a novel by Sherman Alexie. Questions? Contact Mavis at sjm at oakcliffuu.org. Have you heard about December 3rd? There are three things you need to know. One, after the service, there will be a special meeting to vote on the motion from the Widening the Circle of Concern work group to begin implementation of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Workshop at UUCOC. Two, after the meeting, we'll hold our beloved holiday potluck. And three, this year, we'll try a new take on an old theme. It's gone by other names, but to be more descriptive, we'll have a Grinch gift exchange. We'll have new rules this year to keep things fast and fun. Also that first week of December, the First Tuesday Film Festival will be back with Girls on the Wall, a documentary about the teenage girls of Warrenville Prison who get a shot at redemption in a most unlikely form, a musical based on their lives. Details of all this and more can be found in the back of your order of service and in the weekly e-blast. Not receiving the e-blast? Just sign up at oakcliffuu.org slash enews. It's that easy. And that's it for now. Have a great Sunday and rest of the week. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Oak Cliff. Let us begin our sacred work by lighting our chalice with these words from Lai Knevi, a true story. This chalice is for the living the changing, the becoming. This chalice is for losing the script of your life, the chapters about who you are, 
in other people's stories. This chalice is for the lost GPS that was supposed to show you how to get where they expected you to go. This chalice is for skipping the directions, coloring outside the lines, painting not by number but by silence, by wild abandon, with a brush you make yourself, from light deep inside, startling, vivid, a new voice that already knows you. Finally, a true story. So Singing the Journey uses our six sources as organizing themes as shown in the sections of the table of contents. The living tradition we share draws from many sources, so come with me now on a short spiritual romp through these six sections of the hymnal as I draw only from the song titles in each of these haiku-like poems to honor the inclusive breadth and creativity of both our living tradition and this collection of tunes. Transcending Mystery and Wonder When our heart is in a holy place, there's a river flowing in my soul, and my quiet sorrow comfort me. Breaths, when I am frightened, open my heart. Warning has come. Words and deeds of prophetic people. Standing on the side of love, I know I can. Open the window. Love knocks and waits for us to hear. The fire of commitment. Oyaya, come with me and go with me. Building bridges, when the Spirit says, lean on me. Wisdom from the world's religions. Freedom is coming, filled with loving kindness. Jewish and Christian teachings. Hush, there is a balm in Gilead. Shall we gather at the rivers of Babylon? We begin again in love, be thou with us. Humanist teachings. As we sing of hope and joy, may your life be as a song, ours be a religion, all around the child. We are the oneness of everything, let this be a house of peace, for so the children come. Earth-centered traditions, evening breeze, rising green, mother I feel you, on the dusty earth drum, turn the world around, mother earth, beloved garden, blue boat home. At this time in the service, we take time to share what is in our hearts and on our minds. If your heart is heavy today, know that you don't have to carry that heartache alone. Together we can offer comfort. 
Please share your sorrows publicly by posting them in the Zoom chat, send them to our Facebook Messenger, or speak them aloud. When I breathe in Also share our joys with one another, knowing that joy calls unto joy, amplified. Together, our voices can rise in a chorus of celebration. Please share your joys publicly by posting them to the Zoom chat, or send them to our Facebook Messenger, or speak them aloud. Welcome to the UU Church of Oak Cliff. Here, we gather in sanctuary, where we're free to pursue our own unique and individual spiritual journeys in an atmosphere of acceptance, compassion, and celebration. We seek to build a community where what you believe is less important than how you believe, than how your beliefs guide and inform your participation in this world. Ours is a community that values the inherent worth and dignity of every human being. To our returning visitors, we are so happy that you have joined us again. We know your time is precious and we're honored to have you here today. And we would like to extend a warm welcome to those who are joining us for the first time. We recognize the bravery it took to come into a new place, and we're glad you're here. Ours is a covenantal church, Latin for come together. Covenant means a solemn agreement or promise from the heart regarding a course of action between parties. The practice of promising to walk together is the core of our faith. Simply put, it is a guide for the behavior we expect from ourselves and each other. We are bound together by the promises we make to one another, and we recite our covenant during every worship service. Please rise in body or spirit as we recite our covenant. Because we love one another, we honor each individual's spiritual journey. We celebrate life's abundance in service to each other, our community, and the world. Thus, we connect each other in love, respect, and in acceptance. Thus do we covenant together. ¿Por qué Porque nos, nos amamos uno al otro. Honramos el viaje espiritual de cada individuo. Celebramos la abundancia de la vida en el servicio a entre sí, nuestra comunidad y el mundo. Ponemos en contacto a unos con otros en el amor, respeto y excepción. Así que hacemos pacto. This poem is called Q and A, as in question and answer. For the sound of it, for the shakes, for practice, for play for channel surfing the all mind, for brevity, for wit, for lush languaged songs of pain, for mapping the way to survive. That's what poetry is for. I wrote that poem 16 years ago when someone online asked about the purpose of a specific section of our message board. 
Although wordplay has long been my creative outlet of choice, my soul practice, so to speak, I've also long believed that all forms of non-malicious creativity contain the seeds of inherent worth and spiritual enrichment. Poetry, painting, macrame, sculpting in sand or clay, singing and dancing, whether to an old tune or one that you make up as you go along, practicing the culinary arts or growing a garden, curating a collection of aesthetic trinkets or puns that make your friends groan, drawing or scribbling or decorating the sidewalk with colorful chalk, making a collage or playing the kazoo, rearranging the furniture to make a more welcoming space for yourself and others. I could easily spend an hour listing various activities and still only scratch the surface of how it's possible to engage our creative selves and bring more artistry into our lives. Why is it then that by the time many people reach adulthood, They've given up on the idea of seeing themselves as artistic or creative. I think that several things come into play, including that as we find ourselves more burdened by adult responsibilities, we tend to forget the value of play, of doing something for the sheer enjoyment of doing it. I was going to tell you a story at this point, a true one, that started once upon a time. But as I began to type it out, I thought to myself, I probably already have that written down somewhere. And I went to look for it. I was actually surprised by what I found. I wanted to write a poem today. I wanted to write a poem today about standing on the lawn in a sheer sundress, tossing a toy elephant into the air while the cat watched from inside the house and neighbors maybe watched from across the street and I watched Babar flying toward blue sky and falling back into my outstretched arms again and again and again and grinned. I wanted to write a poem today about how a chore became a silly, solitary game when I set out to pound the dust from yards of gray plush and got so carried away that even the cat seemed to laugh and the neighbors, maybe watching my back from across the street, must have thought me mad as a March hare, but I didn't care because it was fun. I wanted to write a poem today. Instead, I wrote this. There are a couple of things that I hope you'll take away from my once upon a time story. For one thing, it turns out that allowing yourself to be playful can replenish your creative wellspring in surprising ways. The other takeaway is that engaging with your creative self really does encompass activities far outside the boundaries of what is traditionally considered art. If you can put your own spin on something as mundane as spring cleaning, and I think you can, you are creative. Turning now to the kind of activities that are more traditionally considered artistic, writing, singing, painting, and such we tend to run into a couple of other impediments when it comes to finding and following our creative paths. Too often, we come to believe that making art is more about the art than the making, that unless we can create something so masterful that it qualifies as art with a capital A, it's not worth making the attempt. This idea can't help but be reinforced when we are surrounded by and drowning in a culture that measures everything by the yardstick of the almighty dollar.
When we do manage to set aside the idea that the only art worth making is art that will make money, we still have to contend with the voices in our head that say what we make is not good enough. Honestly, I mean, it's happening to me right now as I prepare these remarks. Words are my jam, but when I try to put a lot of them together in one place, they often feel jammed up and stilted. And I'm only now beginning to realize how very, very many words it takes to speak for 10 or 15 minutes. I would love to feel confident in my ability to write and deliver a thought-provoking service that comes across with the sort of direct conversational ease that some people seem to manage. But right now, the self-critical voice in my head is yapping at me about all the ways that I am probably going to fall short of that goal. The thing is, it really doesn't matter at this point whether that yapping voice is right or wrong, because here I am working on my spiritual practice right in front of you. It is some consolation to think that the chances of this video going viral are slim to none. There may be times when you struggle to complete a creative project and can see only its flaws and shortcomings when you step away. Flaws that are too often magnified by our tendency to compare ourselves with other artists or creators who knock our socks off. That was my reaction late one night when a friend sent me something by the Sufi poet Rumi and it inspired this bit of doggle. I will take my broken heart now, thank you very much, fold it under my pillow and rest a while, wondering if the truth fairy will visit, forgive the decayed state of the goods, and leave me bus fare for the next stop on what looks to be a long, long trip. If you are an adult hearing this service in 2020, you've already been on a long journey. The last 12 months alone have probably aged you as much as any dozen years. But if you are lucky, you may still have the journey of some good years ahead of you. I believe that your life and the lives of the people around you will be better and more fun if you find ways to nurture and value your creative self. As Eric Walker Wickstrom, author of the Spirit in Practice workshop material points out, our attachment to outcomes is a problem that hinders more than just our ability to express ourselves creatively. Over and over again in our lives, this issue is a stumbling block. It could even be said that the core of the spiritual traditions of humankind is the encouragement to become free from such attachments. Worry about how someone will respond. The outcome keeps us from speaking up. Concern about failure keeps us from taking a risk and trying something new. Again and again, we find ourselves hampered by our attachment to the outcome of a given situation. So even if there were no other benefit he continues, engaging in a regular practice of artistic creation provides opportunities to practice releasing our attachment to an outcome and does so in a safe way. The last poem that I'm going to share was written by a dear friend of mine in California. When she shared it with me some weeks ago, I told her, that fits right in with what I'm supposed to talk about in November. That would be reason enough to include it here with her permission, but doing so also brings this service full circle in another way. Nine and a half years ago, when I was exploring the question, should I pursue the urge to find a church? And musing about what that might look like or mean, I typed the words, 
what I want. What I want is, what is it that I want? What I want is to feel like I used to feel, connected, purposeful, useful. This poem is by the friend who replied, you sound like a Unitarian to me. Painting by Kathleen McCall. I painted behind the stove today, sitting on the sticky floor with my can and brush, happy to paint something no one would see. I always paint those places, the behinds and underneath, scrubbing back and forth with my cheap brush. Brush in one direction, don't let the paint creep up the brush. Yes, I know, but behind the stove is mine, and so is this dollar store brush. I do my best work when no one is watching. It's a simple joy. You know no one will ever see back there. I know, and that is why I am painting it. In closing, I offer this invitation and exhortation. Take a few minutes today to consider the ways in which you are or would like to be creative. Then go out this week and make something. What you make doesn't have to end up anywhere close to perfect. It doesn't even have to be put on display unless that also brings you joy or you impulsively volunteer to step into the pulpit and talk about it. What matters is that you learn to find satisfaction and spiritual growth in the process of making, and by doing so, open yourself up to a wider world of possibility. Just as long as I have breath, I must answer yes to life. Though with pain I made my way, still with hope I meet each day. If they ask what I did well, tell them I said yes to just as long as vision lasts, I must answer yes to truth. In my dream and in my dark, always that elusive spark. If they ask what I did well, tell them I said yes truth. Just as long as my heart beats, I must answer yes to love. Disappointment pierced me through, still I kept on loving you. If they ask what I did best, tell Thank you very much. While you are still standing, if in body and or spirit as you are able and willing, um, please re join me in reciting our widening the circle of concerned covenant to reaffirm our commitment to the vital anti-racist work that we have undertaken at this congregation. We, the Unitarian Universalist Church of Oak Cliff, commit ourselves to the study and dismantling of racism and oppression within our congregation. We commit our congregation and ourselves to the work of anti-racism and anti-oppression. We commit ourselves to listening, to learning, and to action. When we fail, we commit ourselves to trying again and again. We covenant to begin this work 
and to continue until all of us can truly say that we are a beloved community of justice, equity, and compassion. Thank you. Um, our winding moment uh, today is that, uh, first of all, I want to urge you again, check out the uh, film that we're showing um, first Tuesday in December, because it's about making things. It's about some girls in prison making something that helps share their story in ways that open their eyes up to new things about themselves. And the other thing we're going to have, we have for our uh, widening moment is I have a movie trailer to share with you. So fantastic documentary that Kelly and I saw a few years ago. And just the trailer alone, I think is just really Grab, grabs me, but I would also like to possibly bring this film to our Tuesday screenings in the spring if I can get some help with financing, because the the uh, licensing rights for this are a little bit um, outside the budget that I have had available for, that I make available for putting films on, so um, if, you, if you, if the trailer intrigues you and you're interested in helping bring it to our sanctuary in the, the spring for our film night, um, Get with me, and thank you. 85% of artists in major American art museum collections are white, and then 1.2% are black. The general public is not aware of the contributions African-American artists had made to American culture in general. David Driscoll, a professor of art at the University of Maryland, has organized this show called Two Centuries of Black American Art. Had this black art exhibition not been organized, many of the artists who are shown here never would have been seen. Two Centuries of Black Art was the first major modern exhibition which brought the black subject to the attention of the American public. It wasn't an exhibition that was supposed to do everything for everybody. David Driscoll helped move us forward during a time where we were still fighting for space in museums. It's not always about being appreciated. Sometimes it's about being reviled. I did what I wanted to do and paid the price. I just stay out till I get in. Whenever you made work, it ought to be about something. And it ought to be about something that mattered. You'll be the first African-American painter to paint the first African-American president is absolutely overwhelming. We're part of a continued renaissance. It's been happening. There have always been black curators. There have always been black artists. They just perhaps have not been part of the mainstream. You start to understand the enormous struggle that this country has been on to feature and to display and to honor the work of black artists. This is something that had to be done because the American canon is not complete without it. This is a house of art, adorning its celebrations with melodies and handiworks. It is a house of prophecy, outrunning times past and times present in visions of growth and progress. This house is a cradle for our dreams, the workshop for our common endeavor. Excerpt from this house by Kenneth L. Patton. To make an offering or fulfill your pledge, many options are available today. Members, if you are contributing cash towards your pledge, please use an envelope from the basket and write your name on it. To text your donation, see the number on your order of service. For more options, see oakcliffuu.org forward slash donate. Tea over
So a note for our closing words, I has been changed to you. What are you creating? A meditation by Victoria Fiore. Life is like water that flows from place to place, and you can create a ripple in that water by how you touch life. What kind of ripples will you create today? Will you nurture others? Encourage others? Feed others? Create something that inspires others? Laugh and communicate with others? Play with others? Help someone hold on? And how will you also remember to feed and nurture yourself? Today, choose to notice what kind of ripples you create. May life flow through you in a way that blesses everyone you meet. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Extinguimos eselam para no la luz de verdad y calor de comunidad o fuego de nuestro compromiso. Extra los llamamos en el corazón hasta que estemos juntos otra vez.